Hello folks, welcome back to X-Plane 11. We are going to finally get back in the Cessna 172. It's been four months since my last upload. So we're going to continue off from Damascus, which is where we landed. Um, this is Damascus. Unfortunately, it looks like the developers have not done any work on Damascus International Airport because it's just a couple of runways. There are no parking spaces, there are no buildings, which is why we've also been spawned right here on the threshold on uh, 05 right runway. So I'm going to actually do a little bit of free pre-flight planning for this. So we're going to go check the Sky Vector website and just have a look at a couple of things before we jump in the cockpit. So here is a map that is provided by Sky Vector, and you can see here we have the details for Damascus. I've decided that I'm going to continue by flying directly towards Guriat, which is on a bearing, if I'm to be uh, if I'm to believe this, of 158 degrees on 126 nautical miles. So it's going to take us an hour or so to make this journey. We start getting into rather sparsely populated area when it comes to airfields. So I'm going to have to pick out my way through across um, Saudi Arabia in about four or five hops. They're probably all going to be quite long hops. Now there is a bit of terrain up here that shows probably at about 6,000 feet, so I think I'm going to have to avoid that. What I will do is I'll go out on the 170 radial from Damascus. Damascus is 116. I'm going to use my navigation radios for the first time, and then we're going to get to about the 315 or 320 radial from Guriat, which will put us in about here somewhere, and then we'll turn down towards Guriat. So that's the plan. Um, I don't know if it's going to work. I'm not so comfortable with the transition over here, knowing when I'm on the 315 from Guriat, but I think I can work it out. Let's jump back in the cockpit then and we'll get ourselves started. So I've been through all the pre-flight stuff already using the REP project. I've done the walk around and checked the maintenance and done everything else I need to do. So we'll just get the aircraft now set up for start procedure. One thing I do need to just quickly do, I think, on here is check my fuel quantity. Let's go with 75. Fuel on both, that should give us enough fuel to get where we're going. Oh, let's actually increase that. We'll go with 100 fuel on both. We are showing a 75 kg um, even on the front row. I'm actually going to zero out the right hand side, and yeah, I'll go with 75 for me. That's not terribly different <clears throat> from my real world weight. I've just given some personal information away. Whoopsie, whoopsie. Okay, we're ready to start. I'm just going to shoot up through my checks here. Um, I will not bother doing a radio call in. We're just going to fly based on our own, our own skills here. Um, alternator can come off actually because I want to just check the Laps to begin with, make sure they're in the up position. Excellent, there they are. Right, and we'll just make sure we're in fully lean and the throttle is out. We are set to both here, parking brake is on. We're good to start. So, battery on, yes. Mixture to lean, throttle to one quarter. We turn the fuel pump on. So, I'm just going to all these off. Everything's sort of spawned in with everything on here, so I just have to check everything's off. Our right, fuel pump will go on, then we'll go mixture full rich until we get flow, and then we'll lean it and turn the fuel pump off. So watching the fuel flow gauge. Yeah, there we have fuel. Pump off. Good. Now we can 
turn the engine on and juggle the throttle and then we have to go full rich pretty quickly so we start juggling the throttle thank you for that okay set for about a thousand rpm nice and slow then we can turn our alternator on get the avionics on get some all the lights on might as well go Christmas tree mode and we want to set our navigation so our 116 is our radio here at actually I'm going to use the other one I'm going to use this one here 116 is our radio for Damascus I've already checked that that's uh, information provided by Sky Vector Ah, we have 116 showing already. Excellent, so I can set the secondary to 114.7. The secondary is Guriat. 114, whoopsie. And we're showing that one there. Can flip them over. Ah, now 114.7 is not giving me a response. I don't know if that means we're too far from Guriat or whether Guriat airfield is not modelled in X-Plane. That would be a bit of a disappointment. We can check the map. What's this one here? Prince Hassan. Okay, I think I'm going to go with Prince Hassan instead. It doesn't zoom out very far. The X-Plane 11 map, and there's no there's no VOR or nav information for that airfield there. And unfortunately, the X-Plane map is limited to a very small area. You can't actually scroll along. So I have no way of knowing whether the airfield I want to use is even modelled in the sim. And they don't have a map that shows a list of all airfields that are modelled. Some little birdies icon showed up there. So we're going to continue with our pre-planned flight. If the airfield that we're aiming for is not actually in the sim, then I'll land at uh, Prince Hassan. Good to have a backup plan. Okay, we're good to go. After getting airborne, we're going to turn on to 170. That is about there. That'll be my autopilot heading. I'm going to set my transponder code to 2000 and just leave it on standby. Let's go. Little bit of a little bit of engine pulling me to the left there. It's incredibly touchy on the on the rudders now. I'm putting in the smallest possible amount of rudder my my rudder pedals will let me, and it's overcompensating very much. Okay, we're airborne. We're going to turn right very soon to one seven zero. Now there are no aircraft and there are no buildings here, so I don't have to wait till I've cleared the end of the runway and cleared the field before turning right. I'm going to turn right. I've also noticed that the frame rates are not getting any better in X-Plane 11. My settings aren't that high, but it's very stuttery. So I think it might be V-Sync or something, trying to compensate for the lack of frames. I get a very low frame rate. Which is a shame. And when you're in this part of the world on X-Plane, it actually doesn't look that good either. The textures are pretty boring. 
I'm using the default sky which as you can see is pretty plain especially when it's clear blue day so there's no real reason I don't think that the sim should be producing such low frame rates so we're climbing out on the once we're on 171 for track let's just see if we can see what radial we're on here it says I'm on Damascus I'll do the same on this um, I'll do the same on this we'll turn the autopilot on just hold that. Okay, 176 is alright. I'm going to change this one also to 116. Okay, so we're on uh, radio 103. So we're taking our time to get around onto the Taking our time to get round onto the 170. My track is 170, so the radial is just catching up on us. It's taking its time. I can set this one as well to 116. Don't think it's used actually. Maybe a paid mod or something. So we're flying along at uh, 100 knots. I'd love to get that up to 120. That looks like the piece of land I saw. The bump. I'm now tracking 170 nicely, so we should see the radial still moving around, although very slowly. Damascus is back there, well behind us. So we talked in um, in the comments to a previous video about the fuel apparently not going down. So we're going to pay a bit more attention to the fuel gauges in this flight. It does look like we are actually eating fuel. Um, in my last flights the fuel was just sitting static at about 17 gallons on both tanks. It never seemed to move. So we're showing 20 two or so on the right and 23 on the left. We'll keep an eye on that and see if that starts to go down throughout the flight. There is, as far as I'm aware, no way of manually setting whether or not fuel consumption occurs. It should be on by default all the time. So today will be a good chance for us to check if I am actually eating fuel. My selector is, oh dear, my selector is set to both down there. So we should be we should be consuming fuel. This little bit of high ground is coming up here on the left. There's some weird oh, it's a cloud. No, it's a piece of scum on the on the canopy. That cloudy looking object there that's right in the middle of my screen that's just some dirt on the canopy I think I'm gonna climb up another thousand feet or so here so I'm gonna disable the AP Pull the nose up. You can afford to go for a 2500 RPM. Push the engine a little bit. If I can get up to four and a half thousand or four thousand, maybe above sea level, then we'll be fine to clear this 
this lump of terrain here. You can see there when I'm moving my head with track IR how stuttery and jittery the movement is. I run a 980 Ti graphics card which has started to get a little bit long in the tooth nowadays but um, it's definitely no chance of me buying a new graphics card, not at the moment. I'm waiting for the prices to come down again a little bit more and then I might get a 1080 Ti which should last me out a couple of years. Don't think I'll bother waiting for the 2000 series because who knows when that's going to happen may not be till the end of 2018 before those cards are released. So it looks like we may make four and a half thousand feet after all. We're just about coming to that altitude. And I'm just off track now too so I need to come left. And now says I'm on the 160 radial. And I'll actually never get onto the 17 because I have to overfly the radial to get onto it. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to come onto about 200 and just overfly the radial. Airspeed's just getting a little slow, so we'll now level off. We'll also. Turn the AP on and I'll bring this around to 200. And turn the heading on. Okay, so autopilot's flying the aircraft. Speed coming up through uh, 110, 115 knots now. And we are now showing on the 164 out of Damascus, which is just about perfect. I'm going to see if the 114.7 is giving us anything. Yes, it is. Correct. We are now in business, and it says we're on the 336 radial. I want to hold our heading here until we get onto the 315. Now we're on the 17. We can come left onto our actual heading, which is 170. We're on the 167 radio, we're just about there, so that's okay. I might just come a little bit right of 170, and then we'll slowly come onto the 170 radio. But it's okay if we come left a few. So we'll just hold this heading of uh, 175 degrees, and I'm going to change my nav radio over to Korea now. And that's going to keep counting down from 33, what is it now, 336. That should count down. And I'm going to turn left onto the inverse of 315 when we get to the 315 heading. Which should be 135. So once we hit 315 here, I'm going to turn the aircraft onto 135. And hope like hell that I've got my math right. It's not really math, it's just using the compass rows. Pretty basic. Nearly coming on 120 knots, I'd love to hit that. Miles per hour we've got is uh, 130. So. KPH is up around the 160, 170 mark, and I don't know how many kilometers the journey is, but it was uh, 120 nautical miles or so. So a bit of a trip. Checking fuel consumption. Very hard to tell if it's going down. I'm using 12 gallons per hour. So 6 gallons 
should drop by the time we get to the end of our flight. So we should be showing about 15 or 16 on each tank by the time we get to the end. That's what I'm expecting. Can't really increase the RPM any further because I'm right on the button there. In fact, if anything, I should reduce my RPM a little just to bring us back onto 2500. And I can lean the mixture up slightly. You'll see the fuel flow is in the green now. So we'll sit with that. 335 radial now. We're on for Garrett, so it's coming down. It's just gone down by one degrees. A few small desert towns here using showing the European style buildings. just the default scenery so it's going to look a bit weird as we go around the world and we keep seeing the European buildings and that frame rate is pretty horrific Let's see if I can quickly find the show FPS from the menus here don't think I can don't think that shows I don't see it there but I imagine my frame rate is hovering at around 40 and V-Sync is just occasionally doubling up on the frames, which is what's causing that stutter when I move my head around. Should probably just disable V-Sync or make sure it is disabled. Now this high ground according to the map, the Sky Vector map, is at about 6,000 feet. I'm currently flying just shy 5,000 uh, 5, feet so provided we don't go any closer to that I should be able to skip across here and avoid those bumps no passengers today just me up here flying along alone it's a shame you can't multiplayer actually and have other people jump in the aircraft with you. It's two control columns so you could share the piloting. That would be really nice actually to be able to multi-crew and then one, one could fly the outbound and the other could fly in or something. Team up with other YouTubers and fly the same aircraft, take shifts. Check how far we are now since Damascus. 27.3 nautical miles and we are 91.8 out from Griet. So we are one quarter coming up. One fifth to one quarter of the journey. It's going to be a long trip this one. I really want to try and get some of this desert uh, land covered big stutter there could have been weather updating but basically there is no weather today as you can see
probably should get rid of a few of these lights that are pretty much unnecessary. Should have got rid of those much earlier on, but it's not too not too important. Let's go through and do a few checks here. Just make sure our T's and P's are all in the green. Fuel flow is fine. Fuel is definitely coming down. That's excellent. So we are consuming petroleum-based products. Fossil fuels are being burned. Just adding my own little individual contribution to global climate change. People in low-lying low -lying coastal areas will be thanking me over the next few years. And the nav radio here. I'm not sure if that's slaved or not. Should be slaved. Level flight here, RPM is good, showing at uh, 4,800, 4,700 or so feet above sea level. Tracking next to the high ground now, let's check what radial we're on. We're on the 332, so we've got considerable distance to go till we get on to 315. I was a bit nervous when setting that up initially and we didn't get a response that we would be flying to an airfield that's not modelled. But it appears it is modelled, so good news. So just want to check if we're still on the 170 radial out of okay we're on the 173 why 172 okay that's fine I'm happy to be on that it's almost bang on what we wanted Well, so far I'm rather happy with my use of the nav radio. I've never used it in X-Plane before. And certainly in the combat sims I fly, having a head-up display with your waypoint and tracking information um, takes care of all that side of things, so it's not really needed. The World War II aircraft obviously don't have it at all, so it's kind of irrelevant. Not something I get to do very often. It'd be quite nice to have some flights where I've got to do, make multiple turns and then based on different radials from various different VOR or navigation aids and then we have to use various triangulation methods to keep our position so I'm hoping that in the future as we fly along we can make more use of this and we can oh yeah there we go 
incredibly stuttery there. That's the cockpit doing that, I think. That is terrific. Very stuttery when I move my head. That's very poor. It's not so bad up there. I'm just going to get rid of the cockpit and when I move... Oh, the landscape does the same thing. It could be track IR. The way track IR... Um, interacts with X Plane 11. In fact, I think it is the way track IR interacts because if I hold my head steady and just let the game continue, it's not as bad. For example, let's use the side panel of the window here and I'm just going to pause track IR if I can. And let's just see how stuttery the movement of the aircraft across the landscape is. As you can see there, it's actually pretty smooth. So the frame rate that is being produced by X-Plane 11 without track IR interfering with anything is actually pretty good. Once I re-enable track IR and start moving my head around the cockpit, it starts getting pretty rubbish. So what I think I need to do is just move my head as little as possible for the best viewing experience. That does mean though that we get a bit bored of the same view the whole time. But we don't need to be looking around like mad because the landscape around here is a bit dull. There are plenty, plenty of interesting things in the cockpit there to look at. Eighty three nautical miles out now. We are one third of the way there. Just wondering whether we go into Prince Hassan after all. I don't think we will. I think we'll continue with this. Surprisingly large amount of settlements out here. This is a relatively fertile. I won't say lush, but it's a relatively fertile part of, uh, I think we're in Saudi, or about to cross into Saudi. So the few areas where they do have the potential to grow things, I think there tend to be settlements in those areas. You'll see the ground is still gently rising up to meet me. Wow, that was an interesting sudden shift in the aeroplane's heading. I want to just check that we've still got the autopilot turned on. We've still got this set. I think that what is a bit of turbulence. We may be entering some weather. Should be on the 170 now. 173. don't think it's ever going to come right down to the 170. sub 80 nautical miles to go. I can't really get any more speed out of this aeroplane without risking doing nasty things to the engine. I'll go for 2600 RPM. Don't normally fly with such high RPM. I've got 110 knots showing. O for a Vigan right now. I could smash this 80 kilometers or so in 15 minutes. Easily. In fact, we could probably smash it in about 10, 5 to 10 minutes. Shove the afterburner on, and away you go.
but we're stuck with the 172 today. It is good to be back though, I have to say. I'm a bit nervous about landing because I had the very, very tiniest touches of rudder input when we were taking off and the aircraft was slewing all over the place. So I'm a bit nervous about how it's going to handle. When we've got a bit of airspeed and I'm coming into land. So if we do balls up the landing, I'm going to blame the ground handling, which is still a real nightmare in the Cessna. It has been since day one. I might need to fix the sensitivity or something on the pedals, not sure. Airspeed's almost up at 120 now. We are tootling along quite nicely. I'm not sure what the best altitude is for airspeed in this aircraft too. I should probably check that. up on halfway soon. And then I can turn left and we'll start closing the distance to Guria even quicker. I'm on the 325 radial so not terribly far to go hopefully. My track says 175. I'm going to bring that left now onto one seven zero, which is also going to help shorten the distance a fraction. It's going to bring us on a more direct heading. to the airfield. Fuel consumption is definitely decreasing. I'm showing 20 gallons on each tank. So there we go. Definitely consuming fuel, which is good to see. I should check the map just to see what the runway alignments are like at Guriat. Okay, we've got We've got what looks like, actually we should be able to zoom in and see for sure. What a 10.28. Ah, so it's a 100 degree. So if we can get on the 280 radial, actually. The 280 radial would take us straight in airfield up here which is closer. Saheed Mwafak. But it doesn't have navigation aids. That's one of my better, that is one of my better flight um, things, flight paths. Normally my flights have included a lot of like zigzaggy and wibble wobble. <laughs> Very inefficient when it comes to the use of space when I'm flying. 
However, using autopilot and um, using the navigation radios does help you significantly improve the efficiency of your of the way you cover distance. I'm going to turn on to the 315 and then I think when we are how far out? Let's say when we are 10 nautical miles. What is this? Deer? When we are 10 nautical miles out, I'll turn south onto 180 and then I'll try and pick up the 28 radial and then we'll just fly in on the 28. Ticka 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 doom! Three, two, two. We're in the clear now, we've got past that lump that was off to the left. Let's activate the look around again. There's the lump now behind us on the left, so that's all jolly. The other airfield I was talking about, the Mwafak, is presumably over here somewhere. don't see anything. A couple of lonely bumps in the desert over there. Just checking to make sure we haven't done anything to heat up the engine too much. All my T's and P's over here look fine. Everything looks jolly. All the reports from this aeroplane are coming back positively. So provided it stays like this, then, uh, then we're looking good. I think we're basically at the halfway line now. 60 nautical miles into the final destination. Just bring up the details of that airfield again that we're flying to. Right, they're on 122.8. is the wind is zero nine zero at eight. So we can we can land on the two eight, that's fine. One two two point eight. I might plug that into my comms radio. One two two point eight. Just loaded TeamSpeak 2, which I didn't want to happen, so we'll just ignore that. And we can close that down now. So 122.8 is our channel for Goriac Control. Can fly file a flight plan now to get us in. Ah, TeamSpeak 2 loading again, which I don't think I'm going to bother with. It's the AVIO plugin doing that. I wonder if I should just turn that off entirely. No, I'll leave it. I just won't mess around with the comms radios too much. 318 radial, we're nearly there on the 315. 
We're definitely clear of that mountain now, so we can actually turn directly in towards. We don't need to wait till we're on the 315. So we'll turn on to 138, I think. Which is over here. 138. That's about 138. The autopilot's turning the aeroplane. A little bit further than that, that's 141. Two notches left. One degree more, please. Oh, there we are, we're on 138. So there we are. Heading straight in on the reverse of the radial we're on. We are 58 nautical miles out we are now 72 nautical miles from Damascus we are nearly two-thirds of the way there airspeed is fine Everything else is still green here. 17 degrees. Temperature's rising. It is 0545 apparently. Oh, that's you. That's um, local 0745. That sounds better. Flight time 51 minutes so far. I'm going to set the clock for local time. We're not flying across enough time zones. I don't even know if we're flying over any time zones, but certainly we don't need to keep it on universal. I'm going to just come one degree to the right, if it's possible. And we'll hold the track IR again just to get some decent frames. Might try some external views while we're flying along here. Engine tone changes slightly as we pan around, which is good to hear. That's not the flyby view. That is there. Sounded a bit coffee as the aircraft went past. Not sure if that was um, supposed to be sounding like that. We can probably afford to shed a thousand feet or so because we have no terrain ahead of us now. It's all flat. So I'm going to drop down by a thousand. Just getting a fraction of drift, I think. 
This is going to make life easier when we get to the other end too. It's just going to mean we don't have to spend so much time descending and theoretically getting fast. I'm not going to stop the engine by bringing the throttle back at all. I'm going to keep the throttle up. just maintain this descent until about 4,000 feet or so as we up at 120 knots now just hit 140 for our heading so I want to get rid of that still need to come left a bit. Four thousand two hundred. Now we've shed about Shed about 800 feet or so, that'll do. Turn the autopilot back on. Quickly yanks the nose up. Okay, that was not a good idea. I think I had the altitude set from before. That's climbing, even though even though I don't have it set to the altitude you hold, I'm still trying to climb back up to the altitude I was at very strange lost a lot of airspeed there so let's just go down again and I'll try and get it just to hold my heading let's trim the nose forward here there we go Okay, there's about the heading we want. I'm going to trim that in place. Autopilot. As the nose comes up. It's refusing to... Yep, it's refusing to hold the altitude that I'm at for some reason it seems to be remembering the the altitude I had from the very first time I turned it on which is incredibly annoying may mean that I have to fly manually for this last 40 nautical miles which is not going to be pleasant to watch because my heading is going to keep adjusting all over the place and you'll see from my flight path that I start going a bit mental Is it not setting the correct heading? Uh, the correct height, rather. Why is it climbing? Here it is again. Okay, that time I arrested it. Now we'll get back on 
get back on the correct heading. So that's going to be looking a bit interesting. Me waffling about there to try and get my heading right. RPM is just a little bit too high. I do want to bring that back. We're on the red there. Just over 40 nautical miles remain in the trip. Just under 40. Over these very plain and rather boring looking deserts. So I think certain areas of the world have these rather low textures. I do have the landscape for this part of the world loaded but these are just the basic textures and I, I can't be bothered uh, filling my entire hard drive up with all the orthos for the whole trip I'm doing but once we get to New Zealand I think what I'll do is I'll download the ortho landscapes for New Zealand itself and then we'll do some flying around the country with the nice scenery but until we get there we're just gonna have to put up with this default stuff which is a little bit grim. My airspeed's come back considerably. I'm gonna give it a bit more throttle now that we've leveled off and have to be too worried about RPM exceeding from pressure changes, the RPM exceeding a red line. Get the airspeed back up. What are we showing at at the moment? 125 to 27 miles per hour in indicated so about 116 So in 15 nautical miles I'm going to turn on to 180 and I'm going to hold 180 until we see the 28 radial and at that point I'm going to turn in on to 0, well actually 100 degrees, the inverse of 28 and we will fly in and we should be able to fly in and straight down the guts of the runway. So this is a flight we actually should have been able to do at night. Flying this a bit more like an airliner than a GA aircraft.
So the right tank has just dropped below, I would say, 19 gallons now. The left tank's just sitting on 20, maybe just below 20. There's a slight disparity between the two tanks, but it's nothing to be alarmed about. RPM is just hovering below the red line. I may want to bring that back a fraction. That's a little bit better. Airspeed is holding on 115, actually more than that actually, it's about 117 knots. And we're just dropping below 30 nautical miles out from the airfield. Should be dead on our long 12 somewhere. I don't see it. It's probably in the distance just below the horizon. I think flying this in VR would be really great. It's another thing I don't have and can't afford is a VR headset. I'm waiting, like a lot of other people I think, for Gen 2 before investing. That may not happen till, I don't know, maybe 2019. Certainly no sign of real Gen 2 kits coming out this year. game of patience right now sitting here staring at this one screen which is why I like to have the track aisle on at least we can look around despite the low frame it but there's really nothing to see out there barren barren Saudi desert with these weird roads that There's actually a couple of cars on that road. I should just turn off the traffic entirely. It's, it just generates traffic randomly on the road network. And when you're out somewhere like this, and you see cars driving along these roads in the middle of the desert that just stop, there's actually a car just up there. Hey, he just disappeared. He came to the end of that road and disappeared. They don't look, they don't add anything good to the look of the sim. So there's no point in having them, I should just turn them off. And just turn them back on if I get into a big city. But as long as I'm flying out over the desert like this, then they are a bit pointless. Five nautical miles, we're going to make our turn on to 180. Hold the track IR again. ready on the on the ticker here to turn us on to 180 just over two nautical miles to travel and then we'll be turning right
Okay, we're just about ready here. Let's start the right hand turn on to 180. And then we're looking for the 28 radial. So, distance should, the decrease in distance should slow down. And we should see the radial now dropping. There we go, 313. So we are now decreasing and we're going to go to 280. And then we're going to turn onto 100 degrees. And that will take us straight in on runway 10. Which I believe is an actual runway at this airfield. Radials are dropping quite quickly. Gonna consult the map. Yeah, I've got time. So we've made our turn. Let's see if we can find the bit where I turned the autopilot. How? That's where I had the autopilot problems. It's not as bad as I thought it was actually. Just a little kink in the flight plan. But you can see we went south around this mountain out here. Now we're turning south. We're gonna get onto this radial here. Actually, we're gonna go for the 285. No, we're not. We're going to go for the 280, 282, compromise position, 282, and that'll take us on the 10. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. That would have skipped me straight forward to final approach. You've got to be careful about pressing these buttons. You can accidentally press the wrong one. So 282 is going to be what we're looking for. We're on 307, and then we'll head in on, we'll head in on 100. Zero. Airfield should be off to the left. Gosh, there's just no. No landmarks at all out here. It's flat. And they've got this weird bridge. Tons of traffic on this very strange motorway that does all sorts of weird things. Yeah, this is just calculated by algorithms of this landscaping here. No, no one's paid any attention to this um, with a human eye to make sure that any of this makes logical sense. It's just nightmare. Default computer made with a rather average decision making system it seems. How are we going here? Are we on the 282 yet? No, we're still on the 298. We're on the 298, so we've got another 17 degrees radial to travel down. And it's dropping relatively quickly. We're only 16 nautical out from the field. So if I look down on a bearing of about 100, which is there, I should see it. But I don't. It better be here. 293, 10 degrees to go. I want to fly towards there. It's 
So we're not getting any closer to the airfield now. It seems we're pretty much circling around it. Yeah, just getting a touch closer. But we are coming down quite quickly on the radials here. So our new heading will be 100. And I'll pick that up as soon as we hit the 282 radial there. Actually, I'll, when we hit the 283, I'll start the turn. There we go, let's turn into 100 degrees. Just got onto the 282 radial. And we'll start setting up for landing. Landing light on. So, the airfield, there it is. I've got eyes on. Excellent stuff. So from here on we just continue, I'm going to throttle back to 2500, we'll go root mixture for rich, landing lights on, tax lights are off which is fine, strobe can stay off, we won't need that at all. Quick time airborne was 1 hour 17. Quite a long one, this one. And local time 0811. It's probably local time in Damascus. Okay, we need to correct 2 degrees left. Once we're lined up, I'll go two degrees right back onto the runway heading proper. It says we're low at the minute. As we get closer in level flight, we'll get on glide slope. So we don't need to worry about that. We can come back to the right now. Two notches. Two degrees. I'll make it another degree. And another couple of degrees, in fact. There we are, that's lined up relatively well. There's the field, the runways. We're going to take left here. I think right is a taxiway. Fuel consumption looks jolly. I'll start bringing the speed back because I want to get below 85 knots so I can start bringing the flaps out. couple of degrees left just to stay on line it looks like we may have a tiny bit of drift as well here good we are below the speed necessary for the flaps and I think we've got our first yes we're on glide slope too so we can turn off start flying it in. I need a little bit of descent rate so I'm just going to bring the throttle back a touch more. Eight miles out. On the final approach you can see we've got 
three whites now, so I do need to give up a bit of altitude. Four whites now, I'm high. Very quickly gear above trim that nose down too. Very quickly get above their glide slope and I just have this tendency as I've talked about a number of times to approach with high approaches to come in with a high approach. So you can see my airspeed climbing as a result of being high and trying to trim the nose down Just passed inside the one of the airspace designations for this field. Really would like to get those flaps down, still way too high. Let's drop a bit of flap, that'll slow us up. Yes, we can now drop some flap. There comes the airspeed. Hurrah! That will also sink us down a bit, hopefully. Second notch of flap. Very still day. So this looks like another field that's not really been built at all. Too high still. I suspect we're going to have to put up with very barren landscape and very undeveloped airfields for quite some time as we fly across Saudi Arabia and the Middle East. In fact, I think large parts of Asia are going to be like this too. Obviously I'd like to only use main airports and things where they're more likely to be built out but don't really have the time to fly three to four hour uh, flights and I think that would be a bit boring as well. It's probably borderline dull as it is with these flights I am doing. Let's put the last swath of flak in there. <laughs> flak, flap. Flak would be interesting right now, actually. So there we are. Left one's down. Right one's down. I don't see the beacon flashing. It's probably not visible from this angle. So we are just over three out from the beacon, a bit closer to the threshold. 60 knots here. I am still high according to the indicators on the field, but it's all right. This is it actually feels to me to be too low. I really hate 
doing low approaches. I think it's because I hate losing sight of the threshold. When you get on a low approach and your nose comes up like that and you lose sight, I like to have it kind of in the middle of my vision, in the middle of the canopy, which is why I come in so, so high all the time. Starting to notice if there's any drift. I think the wind said 09, which is almost straight down the middle of this thing. No appreciable drift. The only the only off course part about this is me just wobbling the ailerons. Brakes are off, parking brake is off, tow brakes are free. Now I'm getting nervous already about the handling when we touch down. The aircraft sliding or turning left and right about the centre line. And now I can appreciate that we are high and fast as we get into this last little section. There's no worry for a Cessna though because I don't need much runway at all. And we'll just come in here, just bring the nose wheel up a little bit. And I think we had the main gear down first there wheel down just after. Okay, at these air speeds it's fine the handling. Or ground speed that we're at. Now see it's starting to overcompensate. This is the very smallest touches of the nose wheel and I'm kind of dancing on it like you do. Very tiny touches there just ever so small and it's kicking off all over the place. But we're in Lean the mixture. Okay, fouling the spark plugs there because I had the RPM too low, but a full rich mixture. So there's nowhere to taxi off here. This runway is, this airfield is unfinished. So we are not going to do the gentlemanly thing, or gentlewomanly thing, the noble thing and depart the runway we are going to actually park it right smack bang in the middle because we've landed at an unfinished drone so landing light can now come off turn the taxi lights on beacons no longer necessary there's that fouling again probably destroyed those spark plugs the poor things Let's come to a halt by putting the foot brakes on and the park brake and we'll lean the mixture Never turn the engine off with the uh, Mavionics master switch in the on position. Whoopsie daisy. I should have turned those off before shutting the engine down. I may have damaged the radios, which case we'll have to fix those on the next sortie. But there we go. We've made it to we've made it to Guriat, which completes this flight. We'll have a quick view of the landing, which is something we do every time. So where's replay mode there, and we'll just skip back a fraction. That's a bit far out, I think. We'll go from about, that looks good. External view, and we'll just get a bit closer here, and press play. Okay, so we'll see how well we did on landing. It's not the best of views actually. That is a better view. 
This is the shallower than I would normally do approach. Still high though, according to the signal system. You can see I've got four white lights over there. And it's at about this distance from the threshold. You can appreciate that I am a little bit high. Despite how shallow it felt at the time. Just zoom out so we can catch how many wheels got down at the same time. Up comes the shadow. A little bit of a flare. Oh, not too bad. There's a very, very small delay between the main gear just touching and the front wheel, but that was that was pretty decent, I think. I was almost uh, at the right attitude when we touched in. So there we go. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's good to be back flying X-Plane. We do have a few rather tedious flights ahead of us, so hopefully I can keep us entertained with a bit of chit-chat along the way, and uh, we'll see you again soon.